welcome back friends to this next class so in the previous class we have studied a very important topic about your virtual memory and how this virtual memory is organized and all those things have been covered in the previous class today we'll try to move ahead with this virtual memory and try to touch upon the next very important thing which is which is address translation so address translation is very important why because using address translation we will be creating pages thereby using these pages we will be able to implement your virtual memory so this forms a very major thing while when we want to implement our virtual memory okay friends so that's why this it it catches more importance without address translation it is not possible to do your virtual memory okay so let us start so the first thing is let us assume that the program and the data are composed of fixed length units called as pages that means uh, every program and data is divided into units like say for example i have a program of uh, uh, say i have a program of some 100 lines then what we do is we create pages each page would be of say 50 lines each page would consist of 50 lines then my total program would consist of two pages i hope it is clear 100 line is my program each page will consist of how much now it will consist of only 50 lines that means how many pages are required two pages are required i hope you got the whole thing that means if you observe carefully the example which i am telling you i am telling that each page would consist of 50 lines it means that what now each page has fixed length units each page has fixed length units so which and what this page is consist of now it consists of your program and data i hope this is clear okay so one very important thing what what, what is one very important thing here is whatever the address space is there that has to be mapped into where now your physical address space so when it has to be mapped before the processor will be able to run the program so in order to do this we have come up with this very efficient mechanism called as paging okay now what what is the next thing now the page consists of a block of words that occupy contiguous locations in the main memory contiguous locations have a have a uh, have a small glimpse on that contiguous location what this means now contiguous locations it means that continuous locations that means say for example the first memory location which our page is handling is 1001 then the next memory location which my page will handle is 1002 after that 1003 and so on that means what now we take continuous locations in the main memory okay so i hope so this point is clear next is page is nothing but it is a in unit of information that is transferred between the secondary storage and the main memory. so using page we'll be trying to send your information in between what now in between your secondary storage and the main memory okay so this is very important thing friends and these pages these pages are divided into something called as page frames we'll call them as page frames so remember this friends whatever the logical blocks we have which are calling as pages and the physical memory is divided into your page frames okay and next thing is your length of the pages will be varying from somewhere around 2k to 16k bytes okay so it it runs around these uh, th these these spaces and one very important thing here to be maintained is the page should not be too small and the page should not be too large that trade off has to be maintained why why the question arises next thing is why the page should not be too small why the page should not be too large because the access time if it is small say if it is small then the access time of a secondary storage device is much larger than the main memory that means the secondary storage device will be occupying most of the times when we compare it with the main memory that is the one problem if it is too small now 
what if it if it is too large then what will happen the page may not be used and it will occupy variable space in the main memory i hope you are getting it like to make this more understandable i'll take a small example let us take the example first one is the page is too small okay the page is too small then say for example for our understanding we'll say the page each page would consist of only 10 it will take only 10 uh, 10 programs or 10 units of data it will take it will pass only it will it can carry only 10 units of information okay then i have a program which is of consists of 100 units of information then what would happen friends how many pages are created just have a look we would create some 10 pages like this some 10 pages like this and each page would go to your primary from from secondary to primary from secondary to primary from secondary to primary from secondary to primary yes so this what would happen now it will increase at the access time of a secondary device which is much larger than the main memory which we don't want most of the time is again wasted why we are doing paging why we are doing virtual memory because in order to increase the speed so that we, uh, the programmer should feel all his data is available very near to him that is the main reason okay so if 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 it is consuming more time then what would happen the speed would be decreased if the speed is decreased then the whole purpose of doing virtual memory fails right so this is one thing next thing is what now say the page is too large okay okay now let us take the example that the page is too large like say for example i have a page i have a page and uh, i have a page and this page size is some 70 bits of information it will take somewhere around 70 units of information so if it consists of 70 units of information let us say i have a program which which consists of some say 90 units of information say i have a 90 units of information then what would happen friends how many pages are to be created we need to create two pages page one and page two page 1 would consist of how much bits of information now 70 what is remaining 20 units 20 units is remaining that means you can observe here the larger amount of my second page has not been utilized it is completely free it is completely free so thereby we will come to know that the most of the pages is getting most of the portion of the page is getting wasted okay which we don't want which again is not desirable so therefore this becomes very important that the page should not be too large nor it should be too small both the things have to be done very carefully so therefore this has to be very properly maintained so that the main memory is properly utilized so very important thing is all your virtual memory implementations will use a structure called as page table whatever the memory virtual memory we have all these things will use a structure called as page table okay so before moving into your page table we need to look at some of the concepts which are very similar to the concepts of your cache memory okay so let us try to compare between this cache memory and your virtual memory so what is cache memory doing friends the cache memory is nothing but it is trying to bridge the speed gap between the processor and the main memory so this is it, it is trying to bridge the gap between your processor and the main memory right so this is what it is doing what is your virtual memory doing it's trying to gap the bridge between your main memory and the secondary storage very important difference friends this you need to understand why cache memory why virtual memory okay next very important thing cache memory is always implemented in hardware but whereas your virtual memory is always implemented as a part of software so this is again very important differences so if they ask any differences like you difference in between cache and virtual memory in short then you can mention these two points okay next thing 
so another very important thing is as i was speaking we need to convert our page table or page frames we need to go ahead and try to see how our page table and page frames are created so this is what you can see here right now it is the simple arrangement of your virtual memory using the page table here we'll be using our page table using page table we'll be trying to do your page various pages okay so this is how your virtual page table is being implemented if you can observe here it has a page table base register right so before going into details of this if let us say that the table entries are less then what we need to do then it has to be placed inside the mm say the table entries are very less that is there are no, there is no much data then we need to place all your data inside the mmu and then mmu will use this information in the page table for every read and write access so but however we also know that mmu is also a part of the processor and generally the page table is large so the page table will be most of the times stored in the main memory but always remember friends a copy or a small portion of page table which has entries about most recently accessed pages is stored in small cache inside mmu so this is very important friends how we do this okay this small cache is called the translation look aside buffer it is called as translation look aside buffer in short it is called as tlb using tlb we'll be trying to get our various things okay so whatever you can see here in this uh, whole uh, diagram we have two things we have two things one is vpn which stands for virtual page number and another one is page offset so using your virtual page number and page offset we'll be trying to get your various things okay like uh, uh, say for example so friends well, observe carefully the below diagram here you can find out this whole diagram is helping us how the address translation is happening using your virtual memory okay if you can observe the first part there you can see each virtual address can be generated into two parts and it consists of two things one is virtual page number and another one is offset okay so you can observe here it has a virtual page number and it has a offset okay then next very important thing is what now all your higher order bits all your higher order bits will indicate the page number and the lower order bits will provide the offset the offset field of the logical address specifies the location of a particular byte within a page like say for example which data i want to access then that is given with the help of your offset okay you can observe here using offset we have come here from the offset we have go, went to a particular page and thereby we'll come to know what data is being stored okay so this is very important friends next the page number whatever the page number is there it tells or it gives it into a your page table okay so therefore for each page the page table stores the main memory address where the page is stored and the current status of the page an area in the main memory that can hold one page is called as page frame okay so the starting address of the page table is kept in the page table base register which we call as ptbr you can observe here in the corner so all the starting addresses are stored in this ptbr that is in this register using this register using this register we'll be trying to get your various things okay so ptbr is very important why because all your virtual page numbers will be added to the contents of the ptbr and thereby the ptbr is used to obtain the address of the corresponding entry in the page table so using this we will be trying to do all the we will be trying to get all the contents okay so so the contents of the location are added to the offset thereby to generate the physical addresses in the memory so remember this very important friends that the ptbr is making most of the work so the ptbr plus virtual page number will provide you an entry to the page in the page table so when we add both the things then we'll be getting an entry into a 
page table. So what the page table includes then? It includes the control bits to describe the status of each page in the main memory. We have one bit called as valid bit which will indicate whether the referred page is actually present in the main memory and using valid bit only we can decide whether the particular page can be accessed or it cannot be accessed. Another very important thing is the operating system. The operating system can invalidate a page using this bit that is valid bit. So say for example if the valid bit is 1 then the page is in the memory so therefore we will be using the physical page number to, con to, con to construct the address and get the data. Okay. So that means if it is 1 it means that the page is available in the memory. If it is 0 then the page is not available in the main memory indicating that it is a fault error that is the page is faulted. So this is very important friends. Then apart from this we also have a modified bit or a dirty bit. This shows whether the page has been modified when it is there in the main memory. When it was already there in the main memory at that time only if it has been modified then we call it as a then a modified bit or a dirty bit will be shown. Okay. So these bits will be available in this whole diagram. Okay friends. So whatever you can see right now is nothing but it is the associative mapping. Associative mapping using TLB. I hope all of you know what is TLB. So if you don't know just pause for a moment and try to give a thought and let me know. It's like a question. What is TLB friends? Okay. So using TLB we will be trying to get our next very important thing which is nothing but associative mapped memory. Okay, so what is this associative mapped memory now? Here you can observe we have two very important things again your virtual page number and the offset. Using that we will be trying to get our various things. One very important thing or one added thing here is we will be, we'll be using your TLB. So this whole thing we will be adding here. Okay, so what we are trying to do now all your higher order bits of the virtual memory are generated by the processor which will be selecting the virtual page okay so these bits are compared to the virtual page numbers in the tlb thereby if there is a match then a hit is occurred and the corresponding address of the page frame is read that is if there is match here if there is match then what will happen a hit will occur and the corresponding address of the page is read okay and if there is no match if there is no say if there is a miss if it's a hit it will read if it's a miss what will happen then the page table within the main memory must be consulted that means it will tell the user that you have to consult the main memory i don't have any information so whatever the technique you are seeing right now it is used in most of your work your commercial processors what are the commercial professors processors we have right now that those processors are using this technique using your TLB table okay so very important friends please go through this whole thing so here I'll be finishing my virtual memory and address translation so next very important thing we have is regarding your secondary storage okay so the memory system one memory system has been cleared that is virtual memory the next thing we'll be trying to cover is your secondary storage Thank you for watching. Please watch both the videos very carefully. Thank you.